What is going on, Tigers? This is Jacob filling in for Tom. I'll be with you tomorrow as well. So for the past week, a little bit of change. We've had all the major indices going down uh, quite a bit here. Look on the weekly with the Dow futures, the S futures, NQs. I mean, you guys have been trading. You've seen what's going on with all this. Today we have uh, Tim Ord coming on, and he'll be uh, discussing a little bit about the uh, future outlook for the SPX. Uh, Let's take a look. We have the NQs down almost about 1%. With the ES, uh, the futures down about 0.66. YM about the same as well. Our bonds are going down. The interest rate's going up on them. This is getting into a really strange zone where we have a, uh, a high growth, high interest rate environment. And we'll take a look at that, too. The Atlanta Fed is uh, suggesting there might be, or at least projecting there might be, a 6% GDP growth for the third quarter. Uh, gold on its way down to that 1900 uh, level, down about uh, half a percent today. Silver up a little bit. And then copper as well. Copper has been doing uh, somewhat decently, especially with concepts of the uh, of an impending recession, although those seem to be easing a little bit, at least in the mind of uh, larger profile wealth managers. Uh, Q's obviously down. Spy Tesla down 2.2 percent. Meta down 2.28. Google up. Um, really about flat. Disney, this has been such a shame, um, mainly because I was an investor in them, uh, but they've gotten slaughtered with everything going on. I know uh, DeSantis was asking for them to kind of stop um, pushing back uh, against his change on their, uh, what do they have? Basically, the special privileges that they possess for such a long time. He said they're not coming back. Uh, furthermore, they closed the Star Wars overnight kind of a project that they had. It was very expensive. A lot of the times when you see some of these larger companies, you know, leaning out a little bit, when they cut different features or experiences, the market tends to really like that. We see that with Meta as well. Um, it seems like I was just talking about this in the office maybe last week. Um, you know, when they cut plans for the Metaverse, their stock skyrocketed. They just cut something recently where they um, ha had some AI essentially uh, with different medical compounds, and they cut that as well. Uh, and the uh, stock skyrocketed again because the idea is, you know, you're freeing up cash to do more things. And for whatever reason, and a lot of this might be political as well, uh, Disney, even though they're cutting some of their expenditures, uh, kind of continue to go down a little bit. So we'll see what kind of goes out there. They're, they're nearing that March 2020 low. right around here. So, I mean, that's pretty significant as well. I mean, so that's down from pre-COVID levels that they're trading at currently. We're looking at copper a bit. Uh, Southern Copper has done quite well also. Let's get out of the five-year. We just take a look at this on a year-to-date. I mean, we're trading, you know, from the beginning of the year, we're at that 72 level right around here. Dip down on some pretty significant volume, down to 64, and then we had some private equity groups buying copper and some other people as well. Remember, uh, maybe a month ago when I was on the show, was talking about the potential for copper uh, to go up to prices like this, um, or at least some certain companies, as uh, it's getting a little bit more difficult to find it, and uh, it's in greater demand as time goes on. Of course, we get a little bit of retest on the last day with volume here. Um, but it seems like it might be, we'll see what happens today. Let's take a look on the daily. Yeah, we're sort of down on, you know, trading sideways on some volume. We'll see how Southern Copper pans out. But it was an interesting buy, and if you got in around that time about a month ago, not a bad uh, purchase. Steel Dynamics, I've been watching this um, very closely. Is that what I want to look at? Was constantly testing these levels. These were the high volume levels. Obviously, it broke down a little bit and kind of traversed down to the 90 mark. They came right back, again, on high volume, rejecting this area here, and just trading into this bounds of 100 and 110. Usually, when you have a stock that's testing these high volume kind of bottoms and it rejects it on low volume, that might be setting up for a movement down. We had some high volume on the up end here on the close. So we'll see if it really wants to test this 110. If we can break through with some decent volume, we might be kind of making a new little zone to be trading into. Hawaiian Electric. 
So this company supplies about 95% of power. Obviously, Hawaii, I think it's Maui, uh, experienced some pretty catastrophic fires. And this is traded down pretty significantly, right? They almost have, I mean, I would say a monopoly, right, at 95%, uh, supplying energy to Hawaii. Uh, there's been some talk, you know, do we buy at these levels? Is this oversold, right? There's some lawsuits coming out. Um, against them. I, I'm not sure how well that stands up in court. And I was trying to find other examples, you know, from California, at least, were there any lawsuits taken out against electric companies for not doing enough during fires? Uh, I was not really able to find much data. But what I did find is some of the larger electric uh, companies in California, it took about 11 months for them to really reach the true bottom uh, from, you know, the, the pre-fire uh, kind of price. And so, you know, this is obviously an insane sell-off. Just today, you had a 23% decrease uh, down from this massive gap. And what I would say to that, you know, is a new company going to come in and ever get a foothold when Hawaiian Electric had 95% dominance? Probably not, right? However, I am a bit concerned at buying at this level. We still might see again, you know, in California, you had about 11-month period when the largest uh, electric supplier uh, reached its bottom. So buying at this point, you know, you might be still purchasing a falling knife here. So waiting for some time to see kind of how this shakes out, seeing if they're going to get any financial help um, from the mainland. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. But keep your eye on this because, you know, if the recovery efforts are effective and a, and a bit quicker, and let's hope they are, right, uh, this might see a pretty decent bounce back. Um, I was talking uh, with one of my people about uh, Duke Energy. They, they have a pretty big monopoly around uh, where I live, and they're raising their prices. Like, I'm paying an inordinate amount for energy in my apartment, and I'm not really there often. I just run the AC all day. And uh, Duke released, <laughs> it's just interesting to see how these guys kind of operate, right? And all electric companies do this. Uh, they released a statement, and if you call them, they'll say the same thing, that uh, natural gas prices were so high the past two years, so therefore we have to adjust um, our rates. Which is an insane thing because, yeah, you had volatility for a short amount of time, but, you know, natural gas is at historic lows right now. And, I mean, they burn the stuff off uh, where, they, where they extract it. And uh, I, I promise you that Duke Energy will not decrease their rates, and I'm sure other electric uh, providers won't either. So they might be worth a look. Um, especially if you're in the South as more people move here and it gets hotter. Folks, stay tuned. We have Tim Ord on next.